and company! Hey guys, my name's Scott Bowling, and you're watching Good Company. Today we have a special episode. We have Head, this guy, Morgan Rose, and Rich Ward. <laughs> we got the best decade ever, 80s metal. Everybody's gonna pick three of their favorites. They're gonna go individually. Head's gonna go first, then this guy, and this guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here I go. Walk on. <laughs> Um, I was gonna go with this other one, but I have to go with the very first Gateway album that got me into metal, and that's ACDC, Back in Black. Um, my parents actually bought me this record. They uh, they were into music like country music and uh, Ann Murray. Um, Nothing wrong with Ann Murray. All right, Canadian hero. <laughs> really? Yes. Are you Canadian? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> Listen, I'm in a band with a Canadian, Chris Jericho. This is so you know everything already. about yeah. That's true. I love it. So, uh, so they bought me this record. I don't even know if I. Uh, do you have a diamond in your tooth? I do have one in there. <laughs> That's freaking rad. All right. Well, gangster. <laughs> I turned this record. I, you know, I got this. I, I turned on my record player, I put it on. Oh man, this oh, has got dude. the ins, it's got all the lines. This is the real deal. I didn't have this when I was a kid. Yeah, usually all those ACDC pictures. just has the, the white, white sleeve. Yeah. yeah. And it went on, and it was like, back in black. And I was, oh, I messed up. And being the first one after Bon Scott, too. Right. So it's like. How do you get bigger when your singer dies? Yeah. That's like, is that the only band that's done that? Who else? There's one other, I think. Technically. Van Halen had, had their first record, number yeah. one record. Yeah. Uh, not overall sales, but as far as chart position. Right. But I think those are the only two. Yeah. But this record is like flawless. Yeah. I mean, from Back in Black to Hell's Bells, Shoot the Thrill, Give the Dog a Bone. You know, it goes on and on, Rock and Roll Ain't Noise Pollution. You Shook Me All Night Long. Shake a Leg, Have a Drink on Me. Shoot like the Thrill turned into like the, like our world of, of bands going out on tour, if you heard Shoot the Thrill, you knew the band was getting ready to go on stage. Like, like that's the like, one to go. That's the that's the warm up yeah. song. And to this day, like we still, I, we'll throw it in there every now and again. And that's the one. Like, you know, you've been on the road for four hundred years, you know, and you're sitting there, it's like, here we go again, man. And you're ba da da da. And it's like, whoa, and okay, dun, all right. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it's like, like espresso. Yeah, that's it. That's the shot. <laughs> I what will, did, I will say that, I, in my opinion, that's the greatest rock album of all time. Yeah. Really? Like, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, there's no uh -huh. other record. That's Desert Island. Pick one album. You can have no other albums. Literally, yeah. you've got The Wall. You've got Back in Black. You've got, um, you take the five, Hotel California. To me, it's right. that one every time. I mean, yeah. Every time. What did this record do for you, like, when you heard it? Was it like me? Because I wanted to play music when I heard it. I was like, I want to do that. I yeah, to, to me, you know, when, and we'll obviously have, there's other records that I was really attracted to growing up. This was the one album that I felt like was more of kind of a working class obtainable. Like as I'm starting to learn to play guitar, I could wrap my head around that. Oh, you know? that's you know a good mean? point. Like I, because I, you know, people always say, oh, it's easy. No, playing ACDC is super hard to play it correctly, sure. but you could at least, it's a, you could at least put your feet in the pool and get your head around A, E, G, and D and learn how to play that. And it could teach you the mechanics of rhythm guitar because that really is, I mean, that's the ABCs yeah. of rhythm guitar. No right. it, then, then you graduate to, to Metallica or, or Pantera, but I always get angry when I hear somebody go, what's the first record you learned how to play? Oh, I've worked on Dream Theater. It's like, ah, yeah. you're terrible then. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, you're you, a robot. Yeah, right. you didn't spend yeah, yeah. enough time in center field Ex shagging fly balls. Exactly. Because that's what that is. Yeah, yeah. It's that's like, so same good. thing with drums. I mean, you know, people look at it, it's like Phil Rudd. I'm like, try to play groove, play in that tempo, play simple, stay out of the way do everything you're supposed to do. It ain't about me. It's not supposed to it's be about, about me. It's about yeah. the song. Right? It's about and the song. And he rules it, you know? How many drummers, Always did. How many drummers in the history of rock, if you're at a sporting event, you're at the Renaissance Festival, you're at a <laughs> wedding, they put the song on and everybody there is immediately. Mm -hmm. The pocket oh, totally. is so big. Name how many bands can do that. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. How about the, uh, um, there's a show on YouTube 
And they probably put a DVD out of them in like a Rio or Chile oh, or something. God. River it looks like nine Every million Every person people. is hopping like a Rage Against the yeah. Machine crowd. It's, it's, yeah. It literally looks unreal. Like, yeah. Wave it like, because of yeah. the sound. Live at River Plate. Delay. It's my favorite Blu-ray that I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. crazy. It's yeah. the greatest. Yeah. Okay, and, your, your first pick. And the after craziest him. lyric of all time. Which one? That used to freak me out when I was a kid. Because if God's on the left, then I'm sticking to the right. I was like, oh yeah, what? I mean, I, I was Hell's in Bells? Like fifth or sixth grade when that record <laughs> came out, and like Hell's Bells beast. scared the shit out of yeah. me. Yeah, you know, and then you because know, it's all working. of it yeah. was like it was scary to me. I'm a kid, you know, I don't know anything about this. I'm Kiss Dynasty, man, you know. To me, it was Still, just like it was just music, and I didn't pay attention to that. Like Number of the Beast, Iron Maiden, it was just like. Woe to you, yeah, out yeah. Of earth and sea. Yeah, that yeah. was theatrical, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. like, when Alice Cooper, Ozzy, or Iron Maiden did it, it wasn't as spooky because it's Vincent Price. When you have some working class hero with the hat on, yeah. says it, it's like, yeah, shit's getting real. Yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Dark, like, man. it I was. Mean, they, they, it was the the par cans. That was it. With you know Angus doing his thing. It was the Angus and Brian show when really. The other dudes were ruling the earth up there. They can hold it down, running bro. The game, yep. You know? Yep. Okay, your first album. Um, I mean, I feel like I lose already. What are you talking? I mean, about? I pull can't, that one out. Go I'll, for the I'll other go. black album that made yeah. all the difference. All right. So, yes, because this is more childhood, right? Yeah, and this was like, I mean, I remember going to see. Uh, this is a shout at the devil, uh, drummer. So you know, not too obvious there, but <laughs> I mean, it was. I would go to, my mother would bring me over to this house and I would go into this kid's, the, the kid was never there, but he had records in there and he had uh, Too Fast for Love in there. So I'd go in there and it was on the leather records version, wish I would have stolen it. But, you know, <laughs> but I'm like listening to it and it was, you know, they were wild looking, they weren't this, this was like, once they got like this, it was like they had some money. You know, it was, it was getting real, but I started to like them, and then the video started to come, and then as a drummer, it was obvious that that dude was the, he was the guy. Right. You know, if you're a kid and you wanna, like, you wanna figure, I mean, I had played drums, and Bozio was a huge, you know, I idolized Bozio, and him doing Baby Snakes and stuff like that really was the first look at somebody being flamboyant and, and crazy to that extent. I mean, not the Keith Moon kind, but the, right. the Bozio kind, you yeah. know? And then I see Shannon this. Shannon Larkin version one. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So it's like, you know, then this comes along and I'm like, this dude's ridiculous, you know? Yeah. And then as it starts happening, you know, then it starts getting past this into the drums doing this and all that. But it <laughs> yeah. started here, you know? And it was the same kind of thing, you know? Once, you know, the, the record opens it up, you know, with in the beginning it was like scary. And then I saw them with Ozzy and that was it. You know, I saw it live and I was like, I want to be a drummer. So the, the really? songs on the record are still, they hold, you know, they hold weight still. I mean, they're still unbelievable. This is definitely their best record. I mean, that album came out when I was in seventh grade and I remember getting it and losing my mind over it. And part of it for me too is that. Like this is by far my favorite crew record mm -hmm. because it's the darkest record. No question. And you could tell there was a big change, obviously, uh, for the next record. And it wasn't just like a, they had, you know. Theater, was, right? That's right, theater yeah. pain. And yeah. you can always tell when a band is, it's not like they were searching for something. It was like, these dudes are broke and hungry and they're telling yeah. stories yeah. that like resonate in this dark place. And then the next one, it's about, it's basically a rap record. It's bo boobs and money, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and there's right. nothing wrong with that, but this was like yeah. hard. Yeah, totally. And, and the first time that these songs were even like, I think that Shout Out the Devil, and maybe looks that kill were on us festival they and they weren't released yet so like oh, that wow. show comes oh, out and you know they're doing live wire and it's like some people had heard that before i had heard it from listening to that you know leather records version but then this comes out and you hear shout out the devil and all this i'm like i don't know these like these are new songs and then this i remember going to peaches and i had the release date Go up there and I get it and I'm like, wow, man, Pentagram, this is not cool. Like, this is scary. Super dark. And then you're and looking at this. Show that, and it's show like, that to everybody. You know, Dude, that's you, I mean, freaking when dark. you're a kid and you see that, it's like, that's happening, man. Yeah. And then I realized that I had the worst They're hair. They're coming to kiss his ass. And I was ass. never, ever going to ever be in a band because I was never going to be that cool. Right. 
I, I remember getting this record and it just, everything changed for me. I got so obsessed because I had graduated from like bands like ACDC to Iron Maiden to, you yeah. know, and then when this came out, it was just a whole nother look. But uh, I remember that um, uh, we just toured with, with uh, Nikki Six's side band. Um, 6 a.m. 6 a.m., yeah. yeah. And <laughs> so Fieldy's talking to him. We're, having, we're in catering together and Fieldy goes, hey, I know we've been we've been you know off and on friends or whatever. We don't see each other all the time, but before like we go further, I just got to tell you I used to draw you, <laughs> and so I used to sit there for like an hour or two and draw this. You know, yeah. I would just draw these yeah. guys. I mean, all the details of these yeah. things, they're connecting things, and I mean, you're looking at it and you know that costs like all the money. All right. I mean, to this day, like that would be. There are bands that have like tried to do that thing now, you know, Black Veil Brides and a few yeah, other yeah. bands, you know, that tried to pull this thing back. But that was this is the that was the deal. Yeah, that's the. I that's mean, a like high you bar, said, bro. man, they took they came for kisses, you know. Yeah, they crown, did. Yeah, you know, and yeah. they did because they were more pissed off. Yeah, yeah, and they fought everybody, and they did all the drugs. I mean, I'll never forget this. Am I allowed to swear on this? You can bleep it or whatever. I mean, Nikki Six's comment. The thing that he said was, he goes. We're gonna come into town. We're gonna drink all the drinks. We're gonna do all the drugs. We're gonna fuck all the girls. And I'm like, that's the baddest dude back on then? earth. Back then, wow. you know, that was like, that's what we're going to do. We're gonna beat the shit out of everybody. I mean, in, in the dirt, you know, they get in a fight. They're beating up the crowd. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like they were a gang. That was like, there was this thing about them where it was like, that's the group, man. Like, they're living they, up to that name, bro. They lived up to right? it. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that was my... Okay, what's yours? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this so we can do ours jointly. Okay. And we can go ahead and... Because we, we both, the same one. We both yes. picked this one. Uh, and I'll tell you my story. So when I was in seventh grade, I went to a guy's house. His name was Bob Gallagher. And the only reason I remember that is because it th this day, I walked to his house after school and he was like, you gotta check this album out. Puts this on, Hellion, Game Into on. Electric Eye. I'd never heard anything like it. Cause I had Ozzy stuff and I had, you know, ACDC and Ted Nugent and I'd heard heavy music before, but this was different. The, per the reason, uh, to me, Screaming for Vengeance, like we all heard Living After Midnight and we heard Breaking the Law and uh, but that, that, there was such an evolution. It was right? almost like they went oh, through yeah. a wormhole, right? Yeah. I don't even know what happened because... Uh, there, there was a million records before that one too. You know? A million! And, and, and none. all of a sudden it goes Yes, there. it's exactly yeah. right. It was like skipped. It's like ape, 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 <laughs> Cro-Magnon man, <laughs> Elon, Elon Musk. Yeah, yeah, Elon Musk. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? And like, who wrote the songs? Did they wrote? I yeah, think that's, that's a band. Yeah, they wrote them all. And Tom yeah. Allen, their, their producer, like... To me, this was like, I mean, pro <laughs> Magnum Man, <laughs> Elon Musk. It's it really like, was, right? It's so perfect. And, and the thing was is that I saw that number. This album came out uh, July of 1982, mm -hmm. and I saw that Number of the Beast came out. Iron Maiden's Number of the Beast came out in March of '82. So this record was already yeah. written. So it wasn't. Yeah. But Iron Maiden was much more of a kind of a proggy. Yeah, yeah. This was like super meat and potatoes heavy metal, it was like taking Deep Purple and what some of these other kind of heavy bands were doing, it was so refined, but it had big hooks. Yeah. That was a hooks. thing that yeah, didn't yeah. happen before, is that like, okay, sing all the hooks off of, of name all of those kind of early 80s metal records, like Saxon and stuff, it was like, there yeah. wasn't like, yeah. They hadn't, and, um, and, uh, uh, right, yeah. you, right, right, it was kind one of, or yes, two, you know. but it wasn't, this was such a refined record, it was, they had big pop hooks, Yeah. you know, it really did, and like, even the hell you, chains, that's like the hell you, starts the record, and it's, scariest thing ever, Dude, scariest like, thing ever, oh, and, yes. so huge, yeah. and it, it is such a polished record, and it was the first time I ever heard, uh, high singing that wasn't trying to be operatic. Right. So it was kind of like Ian Gillen, but not blues rock Ian Gillen. Right. It was this new thing where you had this guy who was 
super aggressive, but he had these kind of bluesy rock uh, inflections, but it didn't sound like my dad's hard rock. Right. It was just like, again, yeah. it was Elon Musk metal. There was something special and unique about it. And I don't even know how, how they got there. Our, our friend, Andy Sneep, who produced most of the records that I've, I've yeah. uh, he's now in the band and he's That's still, right. yeah, still yeah. every day like, I can't, yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't manage Judas Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, like every wow. day. Yeah, it's because, crazy. you know, when we were growing up, there, he has five bands, right? It's Metallica and ACDC and Iron Maiden and Judas Priest and then you can, you have to decide who that is. Is that Accept yeah. or the Scorpions yeah, or yeah. whatever? Yeah. But Priest Damn, is, man, Scorpions. Yeah. That, that could have been but, right in there, but too. But the difference is, is that I was always thinking about it, too, is like one thing that was special about Priest was they kind of did away with the mold of the two guitar players, rhythm, lead. Yeah. Both guys. Yeah. Shreds. Yeah. And the other thing, uh, uh, I got this little tidbit, and it was a reminder from, from Jericho. He's like, when he was growing up, Chicks didn't listen to pre to Maiden sure. because Maiden nobody in the band were like hot dudes. Right. Whereas Priest had dudes with feathered hair. Yeah, yeah. They were KK like Downey, the, all the super girls. and Glenn Tipton super <laughs> yeah. hot like yeah. pulled chicks. Yeah. And it was the first time like a quote unquote like there were no chicks lined up to meet Ozzy. But once Randy was in the band, he right. was like the handsome guy. Yeah. He was right. the cute kid. The cute yeah. kid. Yeah. So I think Priest was the first band for us in our generation. Yeah. It was like metal band s setting the standard moving forward. Big hooks, big solos. Yeah. Not not Malcolm and and Angus and Rudolf Schinker and Matthias, where you right. had one guy relegated right, right. to chords. Yeah, totally. It was like, and if and even even the. You know, people want to talk. I mean, Holland was. He, he, he held it. I mean, he, he did. He, he made and Ian right. Hill. It, yeah. it was similar to ACDC, and that they had just this great rhythm section that allowed the the stars to go up front yeah. and do their thing. Totally. I saw that tour with Uriah Heep opening up. I mean, that was the first concert that I like went to. That back then it was like. I was so terrified of the smell of marijuana. And like, <laughs> you go into the arena, you know, and it's like, here's the marijuana going, and I'm like, you know, oh, freaked out. I'm going to jail, know, I'm going into a hell, hospital. I'm jail, then hell. You know, it's like, <laughs> jail, you know, then hell. It's, uh, I mean, and it's like, you know, dudes walking around, you know, you know, they're probably like my size, which is absolutely not intimidating. But back then, you know, I was like, look at this <laughs> giant, you know? But it was like, I remember they open up and here comes the hellion, you know? and like Halford's up on this scaffold, you know, up in the air. And I think actually they might have opened up with Riding on the Wind, then into the Hell, you know, Electric Eye. But one of the best drum intros still to this yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, I mean, I was in right then, but the big deal was I got the t shirt. You know, I was like, I can go to school tomorrow with this t shirt on. I'm in, you know, which is a whole nother conversation. But yeah. that was back then, it was serious. It was like, I bought the ticket, I bought the t-shirt, I got the record, I'm invested. You know, yeah. like I'm in, I don't meet the band, I don't know shit about the band at all, I have to wait for the record to come out to open the sleeve, and if it's not a white sleeve, I'm like, oh yeah, you know, let me read some words and yeah. let me look at some pictures, you know, that was like a big deal. Now it's like, everybody knows that I was at the Hell Yeah show last night, for sure. Everybody knows that, you know, everybody knows everything. What did yeah. you have for lunch? Don't worry about it. You'll be reminded by somebody that will tell you you should go to a different place. And it's like the mystique is gone, yeah. you know? So that mystique was there then. I saw it and I was just like, oh, man, I'm terrified. Weed is here. <laughs> the band is awesome. I'm scared. You know, I got the T-shirt. Right. So, but yeah. That There's was... great memories with that. I'm, do you remember uh, when that record came out and MTV played them their concert? Yeah, I watched it. Yeah. I videotaped it. I oh, watched. Yeah. It. Remember? Yes. I yeah. do remember they that. They opened with yes. the Hellion, didn't they? Yeah, yes. I, it was the Hellion. Yes. Yeah, and I do. Then, remember yeah, that. I remember that, dude. I recorded yeah. that on VHS and I watched it over and over and over. And uh, this other, I remember, I was, I was, I was getting really good at the v VHS and everything. And we had a summer vacation with our family, and there was another concert because they're doing some concert metal series or whatever on MTV. It was a r relatively new station. Mm -hmm. But this guy had a concert on there too, and I think uh, Skillet. the guy, 
Gillis. Gillis. Yes. Dude. Yeah. yeah. We were talking yeah. about Go, yeah. Trunk. Give me yeah. Trunk. Yeah. Eddie Trunk. Eddie Trunk. <laughs> but uh, Eddie Gillis. Trump. Yeah, Gillis. Yeah. And I, I set the. Tommy Aldridge. He was. Rudy Sarza. Yeah. That was the line. That was a dark uh, band, yeah, too, man. Was, man. I figured out how to record on, um, to set the timer. Yeah. And so I left. I went on the six week, whatever, summer vacation. Just wanted to come. All I could think about was come back home and watching it, and yeah. it didn't recall. It was all like snow, and I never saw it. It's on YouTube now. I don't think yeah. I've ever seen it. Oh, it's oh on yeah, YouTube. really? Oh, it's yeah. dark. I'm gonna go watch that. And Gillis was dark too, because was, Randy was Randy. You know yes. this, you know, good he was looking, more of a beautiful know. player. Yeah. Whereas Gillis, was and he was raw. hammering that horsey bar. Yes, you know, just he was. like oh, smashing yeah. that thing. It My was, favorite thing about that video. So crazy you say that is that you could tell Gillis was playing so loud that in between every note he hit, there was this feedback that. Just all yeah. you could, he was playing those 200 watt Mesa Boogie Coliseum heads, oh just dimed, and it's oh just like God. back when everybody's like, yeah. no such thing as monitors, turn yeah, it yeah. up. Yeah. Did, remember, you, did you know that back when you were a kid? Were you like gear friggin' no, genius? No, I, 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 gear was my like late 80s thing. Okay. I, I learned the gear thing when I had all the rack gear, like in the 80s when everybody had to, and then you I saw- always had the best tone. Every- Always, and everyone knows it. It was like Rich Ward, it's like, you'd hear somebody play guitar, and then you'd look over and go, Jesus, this is not even the same sport. Like, there's Rich's tone, and then there's <laughs> this, and he knew it. He knew that he worked hard on that tone. It's like I I did my research. I busted my ass. Anyway, we're talking about this record. Yeah. Oh, that no. speaking of guitar. <laughs> so Ozzy's got a. He's obviously a legend, and he's had a long career, Black Sabbath and his solo stuff. But I mean, you leave the band, and he was he went what? He go in the hotel and do coke for a long time. Oh, then yeah. Sharon came into his life and said, you know, you're not going to be over. And yeah. Uh, and he didn't believe in himself, but. I mean, Blizzard of Oz came first, obviously, but... But that's I the mean, one. This is... That's the one. This is the tone, yeah. huh? Yeah. Like, the songs, Over the Mountain Flying High Again, You Can't Kill Rock and Roll. What year did is, that come uh, out? 81. Oh, that's 81? I just read it. After. That's the only reason why yeah, I knew it was after, quick. yeah. Damn, man, that's so weird, because I absolutely remember so that record. So was Blizzard of Oz the same year, or was it 1980? Year, be year before, right? I think it was 79 or 80, yeah. yeah. Um, Google? Oh, we don't have one of those here. Uh, <laughs> Somebody look it up. I got a lot of memories off of this record, man. Most of these records, it's like, I mean, the beauty of music and that it takes you to that time, you know. I remember all the stuff. I remember I was a late bloomer to all, everything, to girls, drugs, drinking, like everything was late for me. Really? When that record came out, it was like, I will never forget. I remember her name was Lisa Ferrara. I think was her name, but I was at this guy named Eric's house and we would play in that record and they were smoking weed. And again, I was just like, you know, I don't do that stuff, There's a common man. thread. I'm freaking out, man. The weed was everywhere. The weed was my, it scared me, man. Paranoia. Yeah, and then- Lisa, the, if you're watching, this is, that's yeah. not you, it's a different Lisa. It's a different right. Lisa. So, so they, they were playing Spin the Bottle, you oh, know? And no. I'm like, this is uh -oh. getting worse by the minute, you know? So I knew that this one girl wanted to make out with this dude and then there was Lisa there, you know? So this bottle went and I'm like, I, uh, it's truth or dare, you know? Uh, this whatever I dare you to kiss him <laughs> you know and they do their little kiss and everything and I'm like and then it's our turn and somebody goes I dare you to kiss her and I'm like then it's back to that again it was over this record man I listened to that record and I had traumatizing events in I'm my sorry. life it was having to try to kiss a girl which I did not do I played some bullshit excuse and the weed now look at you now. You're a mess. Like girls, and <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. just joking. <laughs> and then but, uh, it all went real wrong. Almost, yeah. almost, a, almost a perfect record, right? Was yeah, Ozzy yeah. like big for, for in your life? Huge, in your, huge. Oh yeah, Absolutely. definitely. Okay, yeah. me too. I mean, That's why I had to pick this. I had what to. are let me? What are the songs on this? Flying high again, I mean, believer other, over the mountain. Can't kill rock, rock and roll, roll tonight. Yeah, yep. uh, flying high again was a Man single, right? Flying high again, still when it comes on the radio, I think that could have been released today, and yeah. I believe right. it was amazing. Yeah. Oh no, oh no, that is about a perfect record. It is almost I mean, a perfect record. You know, the only one that is a uh, an, an issue for me is I think. I, actually, S-A-T-O, it's not that it's a bad song, but it, it's what keeps it from, it's like a good song. Yeah. This one gives me chills. You can't Diary of a Madman. Diary of a Madman. So good. Diary of a Mad Man beautiful is. music. Still, that's oh, like yeah. one of your guys' things. Like the guitar players, you guys will sit there. That intro. Well, name a band that could write that today and put that out and perform it. 
That's the one thing about this record is how many bands can we name that you think could make that record? Right. I can't even yeah. think of it. Right. Yeah. Maybe Devin Townsend. I mean, it's just a different right. like, world. Maybe too, somebody you know? like some genius guy like yeah. that who's into heavy music but also understands melody and and because to me, like a guy, the guys in Dream Theater, are those really special, high, you know, high, highly skilled and educated musicians, don't have the dark side to tap into yeah. something like this. Right. Was this really basically Ozzy and Randy? Did they really write? Basically, they wrote. The no, song. that's Bob Daisley. Bob Daisley. Really? Yes, Bob Daisley Was wrote the most producer, of the lyrics. Producer or the bass, uh, bass, player. bass player? Okay. Yeah. So but Daisley. Really? Yes. That wow. was what the, that was the big contention. That's why that Sharon had. Trujillo and uh, and the drummer from Faith No More retrack all the yeah. because they tried to get rid of Daisley and Kerslake off this album for the re-release. They keep his vocal tracks though. Yes. Obviously. So it was Randy and Ozzy. They kept those two, but the other the bass and drums are re-records. That's crazy. So so you have all this like intricate like uh, you know creative music and it's dark and all that and uh, just classical. A lot of it's classical feeling, but then you have Ozzy. When it's like it's one like really cool whiny voice. I was gonna say whiny, but it's not like uh, annoying, obviously. But he does all these blues scales yeah. with his voice. Yeah. Flying high again over the mountain. It's all blue scale stuff. And you believe and go, every word he says. Yeah, that's the yeah. thing. Is it's not just right. It's it's never it's never one thing with him. It's always that when he sings, it's like God, this guy. Who did it to him? Yeah. Like, you know, he seems like such a tortured guy. Yeah, right, right. He's a lot like Jonathan in that there's very few yeah. guys that can communicate with an audience that kind of, yeah. uh, you know, tell those stories that people are like, I believe that dude. Yeah. Right? I oh. mean, like, it's the same kind of, like, there have been his moments where, you know, like Lemmy got involved in writing songs and stuff like that with him, but... Jonathan's a great example in that it's like when somebody's digging into that bad stuff and they're digging into yeah. well, you know, their past or whatever they've dealt with and all that. I mean, you know this as mm -hmm. songwriters. I mean, and I've done it myself, but as as a singer that writes all that, then all of a sudden it's like, how long is this gonna go on? How long can he do it? Like how long are you gonna keep opening the scab on that right. before it's yeah. time? And Jonathan I was terrified of. I was like, this won't last. Like this won't He'll never be able to, to dig up what's been going on forever. It'll hurt him too much, you know? I remember the stories of Ross, you know, and yeah. and Jonathan telling me, man, I, I can't go through that again, right. you know? I yeah. mean, so it's, it's like, like, let's it's, move on now. Yeah, it's like- And then I, you, you go through life, you have other, you have more uh, present wounds and sure. uh, awful things that yeah. happen, like this latest record. We're not talking about corn, but yeah. know, his wife passing away, sure. and he had a lot to write about. Yeah. But. So that's Ozzy. Ozzy, we love you. You're a legend, and your next one. Oh. This is a big one. Yeah, this, this was a big huge. one. This was this this record for sure was the one that moved me as much as I still I went back in full force to hair metal and is now you know totally has overtaken most of my. Uh, so did you abandon hair metal with this? This was this took me away from hair metal for a little while. I mean, I think it took hair metal away as well. I think it's, this was <laughs> like right. the beginning. It wiped I mean, it, out. it started well. That and Nirvana, Nirvana. Nirvana. Nirvana wiped it out. But this was the thing where it was like, you're into this, and then all of a sudden this comes out, and you're like, you can't be a wuss over this here. This is you, they yeah. don't allow it, you know. So, but. You know, this was to me. This was the. I mean, and I had gone through Kill 'Em All and Ride the Lightning, and you know, it, it, it'd be an argument. I mean, Ride the Lightning is pretty unreal, but the production on this yeah. changed Dude. everything. And, and the and the songs. And the songs. Right, yeah. The songs, yeah, work yeah, of yeah. art. That thing, right? This there, is yeah. another one that is basically flawless. Yeah, I mean, it's almost a perfect record. I mean, almost right? a perfect yeah. record. And I mean, and they've they've done great records, but this is absolutely. I mean. Battery right off the bat is like oh, that's yeah. the heaviest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. You know, but it's minute, so melodic, too. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, and drum wise, you know, it was like this is the craziest thing I've ever heard. Like this is the heaviest drums I've ever heard, and this is the future. Whether, right? Yeah, this is In the future, and, and I was yeah. like, again, I'm terrified because I'm like, I can't do all that. <laughs> right. You know, I don't. How am I gonna? Re how am I gonna turn from you know this, you know, into double time in this and double bass doing this you know i was like i'm clueless of what's going to happen for me here but 
this was it. And then, and the diversity of the record, you know, I mean, Sanitarium is, you know, I mean, these are legendary songs. Yeah. Master of Puppets, everyone's played it, you know, or attempted to play it, or given it homage, you know, at, yep. at one point played or another. Played it poorly. Yeah, I Everyone mean, we definitely have sucked at it plenty. <laughs> I know Dude, that we have. The song uh, structures, yeah, bro, Master Puppet, that's just set yeah. a whole and new the, I mean, if I had my glasses, I'd really dig in here, but Master of Puppets, eight and a half minutes long. Yeah. You know, it's like Disposable Heroes actually was probably my favorite song on the record. When it came out, that groove to start... I mean... When you hear da -ga -dun, da -ga -dun, da -dun, da -ga -ga -dun, and then you listen to Disposable Heroes, you go, Seven Dust is a fucking fraud. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's not the same <laughs> song, but it's like you can Dude, tell the influence us, was happening. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was like it was starting to happen where it was like, uh, we're going to do this riff. And it's like, oh, I didn't really steal that, but it definitely was influenced. Look right. how cool they look. Right? They were They were cool looking. I mean, yeah. That's working class, freaking tough dudes. They were the coolest guys in your high school. They yeah. just like, yeah, they just and then this was walked the, on stage. They didn't get ready at all. And, and just, this was the secret weapon, you know? Right. I mean, Cliff, Cliff Burton was like the secret weapon, and then he dies on this album cycle, you know? Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he died on this album cycle, and, you know, Again, it was like, that's not just like a dude that's back there playing bass. Like, what's going to happen? Who are they going to get that's going to be able to do this? And then, you know, they paid their respects to him on the next record by just not including bass. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> it was like, we have yeah. a bass player, but you're not going to hear him here. But then they came out with that record, and, and, they put the and it didn't even matter because they had song quality. Oh, yeah, yeah they were in. And yeah, all those songs on that That's record. That's really when they blew up. But right. this was yeah. the and this again, I saw them with Ozzy on this. I never got they to see them. For him? Yeah, I never got to see them headline this record. But this was what the crowd was, do. It was interesting. It was like they were they were intimidating, you know. They were figuring it out, huh? Yeah, but intimidated, you know, in a sense where it's like we're gonna respond because we better respond. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, so. Yeah. Awesome. So that's that. All right. You're up. What you got over there? Okay. So, um, there's no shame in this. <laughs> Not right at all. Here. Not at all. Uh, this record, I think, changed a lot of things because if you think about it, uh, for those of us who worship this, at, when this came out in 87, the biggest bands were... Bon Jovi, Definitely. things, yeah, things yeah. were really starting to turn. And the reason that I really love this record is this had all the hooks and the pop sensibility of Slippery When Wet, except for it had kind of a British heavy metal take on it. So whereas, um, you know, the kind of late 80s uh, American rock felt a little fun. This felt a little more serious to me. Yeah. And it had a charming kind of character to it as well. Musicianship was, was yes. a lot was higher, crazy. too. Yeah. With John Sykes. And that's the thing that's we were... The, yeah, that was the guy. Yeah. I mean, John Sykes to this... It's funny, like, every album that I picked is partially because the guitar player. And... and so Neil Murray, bass player who was in Sabbath, yeah. played in Rainbow, yeah. Ansley Dunbar on drums, yeah. played for Journey, played for everybody. Um, this was like a perfect band. And the reason that the next record didn't sell anything is because it's that one thing that, because we're all in bands, we've done this for so long, it's the one intangible thing that you can't describe, which is the same reason why uh, the four or the five best basketball players in the world couldn't win the, right. the Olympics. Chemistry. Yeah. It's like it, it's th these guys wrote and played together so well, and I actually no was, one knew it. Nobody because they exactly. said we're gonna all star ban this shit. And I actually r listened to a little documentary about this, and I didn't realize the backstory. This record was written in ninety, excuse me, in eighty five and eighty six. Mm -hmm. And then they brought Coverdale in to sing the vocals, but he had a terrible sinus infection and he couldn't sing. The band took a year off waiting for him to be able to sing. They wow. hired, so this was originally produced by Mike Stone, uh, who was Journey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And 
apparently what ended up happening was the rest of the band was super pissed at Coverdale for taking so much time to do it that there was a little kind of mutiny stuff going on behind his back. What record is it? I'm sorry. This record. I know, yeah, but oh, what, oh, which the, one is it's it? just called the '87 record, right? Yeah. It, yes. So is it is it slided in? No, right? this is no, this after is after that. One. That's the one after so, that's got still of the night. Oh uh, no! Okay, yeah, that's what yeah, I thought yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah. Okay, here good. I go again. Yeah. So, so this is White Snake. If you didn't, I mean, yeah, we White Snake, it up, White but Snake. I don't know if we said it. Yes, it's like it's like the Black Album by Metallica. Got it's, it. It's that record. The, yeah, that's what I thought it was. But my God, it's just that the record song. changed the deal. They made MTV yeah. Hard Rock crazy because they brought the girl in. Yeah, you know. So Tawny Katane comes in on that record. Yeah, and just is. But it wasn't cheesy band. at all. It, no, it, was, I mean, it was freaking killer yes, musicianship. Killer, exactly. Great right. songwriting. The vocals were just like Robert Plant. Yeah. You know, just that still of the and, night thing was over. I yeah. mean, once that happened, it was like that. Yeah, I, I watched that hundreds of times. I would just yeah. every day. I couldn't wait for that just because yeah. I had to hear <laughs> with, how, the, how the song goes out. Yeah. With the with the chord changes on the guitar, it's just like it's 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 a. Work of art, man. Yeah. That song, How that whole record. How many guitar players that went on to play f for Faith No More or the Chili Peppers or any of these groove guys like us who listen back to Sykes and Sykes is one of the first kind of yes. heavy guitar players that could groove his yeah. ass <laughs> off and <laughs> could sit yeah. back on his heels. It's like one of those things that you can't, you, you cannot never teach somebody. It's like. You're pushing the beat. Sit back on your heels, and it's like there's so few guys in heavy music because if you grew up on Metallica, it was all about that anxious yeah. energy on your toes and stuff. But you know, a lot of the '60s and '70s guys were guys who learned how to play from Jimmy Page or Jeff Beck and Clapton. They learn how to sit back on their heels and swing that groove. But a lot of the heavier players didn't adapt that to their style. But Sykes. And Sykes was so sexy. Yeah, man. Dude. He put his band together and that shit was on That Blue you know? Murder record yeah. was almost on my list. Yeah. I just didn't want to be pompous. That was a <laughs> yeah. serious record, man. Wow. Yes. Oh, All right. yeah. So what do we got left here? You got one uh, more, Okay, right? are we good? Um, the editing room's awesome. Are we good on time? Is this a four-hour show? Are you going to do like uh, three This three is like segments? a Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah. Keep going. Just keep going? Did we do? Yeah. Okay, cool. Everything? Oh, well, we only have this, and then we have oh, Journey. We, do have we only have Journey and Dawkin. Oh, did we do Dawkin? No, we, we didn't, didn't do, do it. We were just yes, pull that artwork out first. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let me. Okay, I'll start with that. You guys ready? Uh, I've been wanting to do that for thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Power of the people. Oh, it smells like bananas. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've been wanting to do that for thirty minutes. <laughs> okay, ready? <laughs> okay, my next record is, okay, I was joking with Morgan uh, earlier, it was like, hey guys, you're in a band, right? Hey guys, we got the, I got this uh, art concept for the record, it's gonna be killer, all right, you ready for it? <laughs> Not very impressive, but it doesn't matter because the art in this band is just insane. Docking, tooth and nail, I don't know what to say. I no, mean, I, I, let me just say that I'm so freaking honored that you pulled that yeah, album. Yeah, really? Yeah, Absolutely. Because it it's not a pretentious pick. You could have said Appetite for Destruction yeah. and gone for the easy chum. Yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, because everyone's going to be like, oh, hell yeah, yeah Appetite, yeah. man. Right. And you went docking knowing that some people are going to be like, docking? How can. How can head like Dawkins? And the reason you can is because they rule. Yeah. And that album is amazing. So good. But the thing is, I mean, I thought he asked me, like, what albums impacted you? So I, I honestly can say this is the truth. I've never purchased Appetite for Destruction. Me either. I, 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 I liked it and I liked some of the songs, but it was, I just, I liked the different kind of um, uh, uh, minor music more. I wasn't into the blues thing. Yeah. And Slash is a legend and Slash is awesome and they wrote killer songs. This is my, my uh, style more. And just, man, it, without warning, into Tooth and Nail. Just got lucky. Yes. That's the intro, right? Yeah, the chromatic. Oh, yes. It's so good. We should just do an acapella version of it right oh, now. Oh, dude, you could do it easy. Because those leads, man, that was a that was like a Journey-esque guitar player back then. It yeah. was like the, you could sing those leads. This this album was there for me. I remember uh, 
I had these these friends, and I was kind of the guy who got picked on, right? My friends, they were my friends, but I was the nerd. I was the nerdy guy. They they went through puberty before me. I was just the guy they picked on. And so they were like, hey, we're gonna pick you up. We're gonna go to the movies. We're gonna go hang out at the wherever the spot was. And I sat in with my Walkman outside front of my house for like four hours and they never came to get me. Yeah. And I was just like awesome. so, so sad, but I had Dawkin, yeah. tooth and nail. And uh, Dawkin, Y&T and Twisted Sister saw the concert. Oh, that's a solid yeah. show. Yeah. So Alone Again. Yeah. Didn't that break them into the mainstream oh, yeah. too? Oh, yeah. That was, that was huge. So this this band was just as big, like as not now, but like back in the day in their prime, they were on MTV all the time, just like a Guns N' Roses or a White Snake or anything. So this album was really, really big and really special to me. That guitar playing on that record was like that was another. I mean, there was Eddie Van Halen that was running the game, you know, that did. I mean, he owned it. And then in the newer style of hair metal stuff, when that came out, he was the dude that stood. Yeah, he out was of the, path. the next guy after after Eddie and Randy yeah. and those guys. This was the next generation of heroes. Yeah, he never like he doesn't sound like anybody. No, his vibrato, Super. that it's, thing he does, that little yeah, yeah. Oh. that thing. It was this thing. It was that, and it was the the way that the fingers the fan. were the fan, the fan, yes. the fan, so, and yes. the thing. I mean, I know. Yeah. I know. That. It's, but, but I remember thinking as a kid, like, I I want to be, I looked up to him so much. I just wanted something unique that I could play and I would sound like me and no one else, just like he did. And so I practiced leads. I practiced leads for hours. And I just never got that good. But my desire came true with Korn, we, but our style was a band without leads, you know, when a lot of bands were doing leads. And we have our own style now. So. Yeah. George Lynch was huge for that just desire to, to come up with my own There's sound. There's influence for sure in corn music off of that half step. You heard Dawkins? I hear well, I hear the the I mean not Dawkins, but you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the, it's the half step move. It's the minor, major, minor Dude. move. Seven Dust has lived its life in that area, you know, of how can we be sadder right here? How right. can we make this more sad? You know, how can we go? You know, instead of, you know, it's like there's that move and he owned that Dude, move. He was way ahead of his time. Oh, yeah. And to your point, one of the darkest riffs of that era from that kind of, that scene was when heaven comes yes. down. Right. Wah, da, wah, da, bum, bum. Yeah. And that what was that, that thing, that flat yeah. five thing. Yeah. yeah. Is that the flat five yeah. where you do the, you know how many songs we've used that chord in and corn? I mean, I think. I think uh, Mr. Bungle used it in a way that like influenced Corn mostly with writing songs, but this dude was doing it like way before anybody. Yeah. And it, it all comes down to, and this is what you guys utilize as well, is that it's it's never the notes; it's how they're played. And you may say, "Hey, I don't." There may not be any George Lynch that. But there is. It's because it's in that vibrato. It's in when you hit that flat five, and it's the movement of that note. Because anybody can go bum 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 bum. But it's when George went. Roger, sure. It's in that swagger yeah. on yes. that right hand, and then when he went to that flat five, and that movement there, and that's where it is. Yeah. Anyone can read lines, but it's the actor who can deliver those yes. lines and yeah. speak to those people. Yeah. And that's why what we're talking about, you said they speak to you. It's the same thing with Guns N' Roses. Yeah. Didn't speak to me. Probably one of the greatest bands of all time, but they just weren't writing albums for me. Right. Like, and that's all the thing. It's we can yeah. all watch a 15, we, this whole room could watch the same movie. Half of us think it's yeah. great, half of us think it's okay. Yeah. And it's all about that connection with, the, we all have our fan base, yeah, right? That's, it. that's why when somebody guys goes. have this thing and this thing. This is the difference. Like he, I don't know how he plays guitar. Like I don't know how light he hits the strings or how hard he's he's bending chords or anything like that. But I know that he has a thing the same way that you. I've I've recorded with you before. He he can barely touch the string, and that's where the tone comes from. There's a tone that comes at you guys. You can play the same song, get ten guys that can all rip on guitar, play the same song exactly the same. It sounds ten different ways. Yeah. You know? Who, how, well, I'm communicating. We're talking, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's our chance yeah. to kind of, we, we don't have a microphone. We just have yeah. this. And it's that's right good. there. It's like you know? his soul was coming through his fingers, you know, in a, in a powerful way. He jams with your homeboy. Yeah, he's in a band with uh, Ray Luzier. Roy. Roy. Roy Loser. Roy Loser. 
But, and my uh, favorite KXM. Thing, when was the last time that you saw Foreigner? Have you seen him recently? Oh, I love Foreigner. I haven't seen them. You know, Pilsen's been in the band. Yeah. 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 Forever. Yeah. And yeah. he's still doing, which camera on? He's still doing the same thing where he looks super surprised at his playing. Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> like, do you see this shit? Yeah. Like, I'm with, hold I'm on. With Foreigner. Yeah, that's it. I'm playing with Foreigner right now. Dude, I, love it. How much, I would pay. They wouldn't oh, have to yeah. pay me. I'd be like, you guys need a fourth guitar player? Because yeah. I'll just hang over here and like just do Nick that thing. Nick Jones, is, like, it's really almost, and Kelly Hansen from Hurricane <sighs> is the it. singer and kills it. Murders I mean, what a beautiful it. story so that good. is, right? So you get a good. band like Hurricane that has Cavazzo and Rudy Sarzo's brothers, or their brothers in that band, with Hansen as a singer, band goes nowhere, his career, you know, hair band, you know, hair bands start go away. That dude's jobless, never gonna make it. And, you know, it was almost like the the you know they wiped the hands of a lot of those guys yeah. back then, and he ends up in Foreigner, Foreigner. running the show. Yeah, and then Lou, killing it. Lou has been jamming with them too, doing a, a couple songs. Yeah, they bring right? him in for a they few bring songs. Him in. Yeah, because he's had some health problems yeah. and yeah. stuff, and I don't know if he has the range, but. Man, uh, I mean, that voice was ridiculous. Well, he's like Arnell. He's allowed the band to continue the legacy. Yeah. So us fans who love Foreigner and love Journey, we yeah. want to see those. are incredible. They're amazing. Yeah. And it's the jukebox of our I lives. I could have easily yeah. yanked one of those records in, too. Of course, Foreigner 4 could have been on yeah. this list yeah. easy. Four, how about Foreigner 4 Escape the same year? Yes. I think they were together. Speaking of which. Yeah, dude. This, to me, yeah. my mom took me to see Journey on this tour, 1981, Charlotte Coliseum opening band, Lover Boy on their first tour. Yeah, I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I love this album. Matter of fact, I played it so many times that on Who's Crying Now, I hear the skip. When it, the, the song plays, I anticipate the skip that's on my album. You still have it? Yeah, awesome. I still have it, yeah, the original press. I don't have any of my yeah. records. And um, I'm in love with this album because it is a perfect album in every way because it, this was a band that came out of the 70s. There was something we were talking about, the magic of the 70s, which was just that era of the guys who came out of the Woodstock era. So you had all these, the best players in the world and everyone was trying to one-up each other and it was, it was like, it was just, Everybody in the band had to be able to sing and play. You wouldn't even show up for an audition. Like guys, I go see bands that have sold a million records today that wouldn't be able to audition oh, for a even, band in yeah, the 70s. No chance. Wow. Like, yeah. Like, because it was just a different time. You know, there was just. You had to play. It. You had to you play had to and sing. sing. Yes. Yeah. You, it was, there were requirements that. that <laughs> <laughs> you have to be would, able to sing. I would get rejected. Sing. Me too, <laughs> man. Be, Me no too. No chance would I have. Yeah, there. because you used to have to have chops. <laughs> like, these guys grew up playing R&B stuff and Mot Motown and funk, and everybody knew how to play like Earth, the Wind, and Fire. And you could also play stuff from Chicago. Guys had chops and they could Dude, play. Chicago. That's a whole oh. Another level of freaking uh, yes. musicianship. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm loving 19 them. guys all murdering. Dude. And you take, you, this was the, maybe <laughs> maybe the biggest song I ever ca that came out of the 80s. Uh, don't obviously, Don't Stop believe, Believing. Yeah. And how unorthodox is that drum part? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's you know? Like, everybody plays it wrong. Everybody, everybody plays, plays it wrong. Everybody plays it wrong. And who could, and, and to me, it's just like what happens when, you, the best musicians in the world write, and and it's almost again. It was like we we're talking about ape, ape, ape. Elon Musk. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. I mean, the greatest songwriting, Stone in Love, like Ooh. open arms. Yeah. And my favorite song in the album is that song, Mother Father. Yeah. It's just like that's a like an epic <sighs> yes tune, you know. And and Neil Sean, hands down, I love you. I love you, Neil Sean. I don't want to meet you because I, I, it's you're up here. I don't want. I don't even like because there's no way you can live up to it. And and because he is another one of those guitar players like George Lynch that he he just sounded he, like himself. He, he sings, got the tone. The he tone talks. is his. Yep. Yeah. It's that thing where he, when he plays and and the face and it's not he's not performing. It's not put on. It's like the real deal. He's like a. He's one, a once-in-a-lifetime guitar player like George Lynch, like Randy Rhodes, you know, like Cliff Burton on bass. These guys don't, they're not, there's, there's a, such a unique thumbprint and they were so important to the evolution of music because 
Neil Sean comes in in a hearing aid, who we all love hearing oh aid, my which gosh, is the We Are the World for Heavy yeah, Metal. Freaking. And he comes in and literally lights, there's like fire, and you can see like even Yngwie is like offended. Yeah. Like just because he could shred and he could sing, he could play the blues and he could play those na, 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 yeah. na. And, and the, yeah. he plays those solos that everyone could sing. And then yep. you had Steve mm -hmm. Perry, Arguably one of the greatest, he and Freddie Mercury are yeah. the, the, for me, the guys. Yeah, they could yeah. sing anything. They could be in the Backstreet Boys and yeah. I'm like backstage trying to, you know. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if they have, I wonder if they have like the, the soloed true, out, the, uh, the soloed out vocal tracks for Journey online. I can't find them. I've looked. Because they got all the, like, the Queen yes. stuff. Oh, yeah. The Queen stuff's Ross. out there. <laughs> yes. The day, yeah. That's the greatest. You lying, baby. I'm the best ever. Dude. So Ray, good. Ray has those. Oh, our oh my God. That's he right. plays them all. Yeah. <laughs> but yes. Don't they that have an album? app? Don't they have an app? Yes. Now? He has that Ron. app. And it's oh just like, God, you got to get the Daily Ron. And let's just say this for the record. Nine million albums sold just in America alone. Wow! Like, who can do yeah. that nowadays? The greatest hits record Adele. is still still in the top two hundred. <laughs> Eight Adele. million what? albums. No way! Eight I did not know million that. sold in the yeah. states. In the states yeah. alone? In the states alone. Dang! Uh, this record was so important to me. My first guitar solo was "Don't Stop Believing." I learned that. It was easy, but you sing it. You just yeah. like you said, you yes. sing his solos. Uh, yeah, huge, huge, huge. And and let's think about Zach Wilde's playing. What's that lick on Don't Stop Believing? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. how many of the guys that we look up to now, the dime, like we all know these guys because we've had the privilege of being able to meet and tour with these guys. How many of them like are behind the scenes are so unpretentious like oh, yeah. who would just say, "Oh yeah, dude, for, like yeah. we'll say, "Oh yeah, Ronnie Lee Tecro from TNT? Yeah, he's the best." Like yeah. who would like He was ridiculous. The I ridiculous. Mean. Like there's so many of these guys that came out of this 80s decade because it was a real decade of competition of people feeling like we have to keep pushing each other. It was ex it was excess for sure. It was bigger drum sets, bigger leads, bigger hair, bigger like bigger a lot hooks. of that bigger hooks. Yeah. I mean, it was like it it over I mean, once uh, I wish that I could figure I mean, cuz Journey was not in that mix. They were just ridiculous. But when the hair metal, I, I'd go back to hair metal a lot. I, I want to know, people like to say it was Motley Crue that did it, but once it hit, and just like anything else, it happened in grunge, it happened in new metal, it happened in everything. Once it hits, they're like, okay, we'll take all of those. Yeah, right, right. You know, like here comes yeah. Korn, you know, and the Deftones reinventing the wheel. Like it really was, I mean, Korn like will go down you know? in that as an influential band that changed the game. No question about love, it. Love them or hate them now. It, it is. It <laughs> was the, it's very it was, controversial. It was giant, you know? It was well, like, even this is different. Everybody wanted to use your producer. It was yeah. the, it, like, Ross was immediately yeah. like, you know. He was our boy, and then yeah, all of a sudden yeah. he gave the sound to everybody else. We're like, hey, stop. Yeah, I mean, that's Wait. the deal, you know? It was you like have the exact same tone. I mean, it, you know? yeah. Yeah, but, but, uh, and, it, and it's, it's a combination between the culture and the business that, herds us all in line, right? It, 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 that's, and, and that's society in general. It's like when you see something that has captured something unique, something special, and it's successful, everyone wants to do it. Oh yeah, it's the same reason why yeah. everybody had a David Beckham haircut at some point. It's like <laughs> you did we, too, yeah, of course. <laughs> it had to, man. And, and I think that's what, and I, you know, I mean, we we have had our influence on stuff, but. You changed the culture of music. I mean, your band, I, I remember, like, because Stuck Mojo formed in 89, and we toured the East Coast until about 94, we, and then we put our first record out in 95, but I remember we, we toured so much, and, you, and how you know the culture is when you're touring in clubs, as an unsigned band and you're playing with every other local band in every town. So yeah. then we go to Charlotte and then we right. go to Richmond and then yeah. we go to DC and you really have a, a, your finger on the pulse of what's going on in music because you're seeing the music scene in every city. Yeah. Wow. Cause you're not touring yeah. in a package. 
you're touring and seeing all these other local, what's going on here, what's going on right. here? Yeah. After your record came out, every band had a guy with dreads in it. I knew you were gonna say and this. And everybody in every band had a seven string doing this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Dude, not kidding it's you. It's not a it joke. It was overnight. It was immediate, once it Ray hit. started it, the dreads, by the way. Once we it just hit. Bridge. No, they, they, no, 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 no. It was <laughs> over. Yeah, Once it, it hit, it was over. I mean, it, it was, was like it was the like seven string thing. You, whoever, I mean, guitar companies absolutely should have started shoveling money to corn, because no one gave a shit about a seven string until you came in and changed it all. I mean, then it was like, how the fuck do I figure out how to do that? And you I, know, and there was Monkey Man. He was in love with it. He he was way ahead of my time. I gave up on guitar. He got that thing. They started playing in this funk band, LAPD. And then they were using that part just to write like a bridge or something, like seven string on a bridge. And when I got in the band, it was like, let's write all the songs. It wasn't me, it was all of us combined. Let's write all the songs low. Let's be a low tune band. Yeah. Like lower than Helmet, lower than you know, yeah. all these other bands. So and I'd like to thank you personally because because of your influence, everyone went to music stores and sold their Les Pauls. And all of a sudden, vintage Les Pauls cost 600 bucks. And I was like, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you guys. <laughs> yeah. I bought every old Les yeah. Paul and every Marshall. Because of you guys, everyone wanted yeah. a Mesa Boogie. They, or, and a, like, or, and it was an amazing period of time because it, there, it really, again, you can see how, how the culture was changing in music by by what gear kids were buying. Wow, that's a good point too. And they were yeah. trading in their Marshalls and their Les Pauls because yeah. that was their dad's gear. Yeah. You know, it was, and it's. How many do you have now? Les uh, Pauls. Uh, like, I don't know, 20 or so. Like, 20? Yeah. And they're worth like. A lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah! That's better than I stuff. bought them, I, because of you, I bought them for 600 bucks. Yeah. Oh, I love I'll it. thank Monkey for you. Yeah. So, uh, that's better than the stock market, man. Right on. Oh, dude, it that. is because it outperforms the stock market. <laughs> right. Yeah. If you can, if you got in on a '68 uh, freaking Les Paul and a '68 yeah. Camaro, you know yeah. when when everybody was buying uh, Pontiac Fieros. <laughs> oh yeah, the old Fiero. <laughs> dude, if you oh, had a Fiero yeah. with an eight-track player playing White Snake. Yeah, you're all the ladies. Yeah. <laughs> dude, this was fun. Thanks, yeah, guys. yeah, man. That was, that was that, so. Those were our. Three or so favorite albums yeah. of the eighties. We it probably was fun, talked man. about and they all intersected. We could have all picked each other's records. Yeah. Right. I bounced totally. off. Of I was when I saw your stack, I was like, man, oh, I didn't think of that. And yours too. Yeah, I did the same there. I was like, Dokken, Dokken, that's my band. It's Dokken. And then I'm like, Journey. Journey. <laughs> right. That's that a changed game my life. Changer. That's back my first solo. Back in black. That's the greatest record of all time. Right. I'm like, right. I got this stuff. You and know? let me ask you this before we go: Do you guys have these discussions on your buses on tour? Oh, yeah, wow. We talk definitely. about music all the time. Yeah. Because this is literally our life. Yeah. I, I, you know, from 1 o'clock to 4 a.m., these are the discussions. We literally just talk about what's the best docking record and why. We, we've had this under lock and key versus tooth and nail versus back for the attack. We will have yeah. this argument That's for two albums. Argument. Like it's literally, we'll talk about. Well, check. You know, the, the drum sound was way better on Back for the Attack. Yeah, but they were like, if you listen to Breaking the Chains, man, you could really hear like yeah. how they were hungry. And I right. love this discussion because it really shows that even though we're all old now, like when it comes down to it, <laughs> what'd you say? Yeah, <laughs> when it comes down to it. We, we still are in this we're for fans, the same man. reason that we're we fans. were. That's it. We go the, see concerts all the time. Like, I, I, do you, I, the, I mean, I'll, I'll end my part of the don't deal end here. Don't but let it the, end. The thing is, the one that always gets me is they were jamming back then. It was real. I mean, we've done records where it's on two inch and there's a fuck up and there's somebody clipping that tape and we're moving it and you you know, trying to make sure yeah. we can put it together here. Or vocally, if you wanted a trick and it was something that was way up there, it was like, okay, we'll slow it down a little, you know, to where it's rear, and you're trying to, you know, those were the tricks. These guys, that was all they had. There was no Pro Tools, there was no click track, there was no... They had to play. You had to play it, you know, you had to sing it. You well, had to sing. Dude, think about know? the singing, right? I mean, it's like, Jesus, man, you had to sing. Still, this. or still, Steve Perry. Man, just 
with no freaking uh, auto tune or whatever yeah. correcting. No, you none of that. And you, and you could, you could, you could correct. And I, I've heard stories of how much drum editing went into the black album and two inch tape, but it took so much more time. So you didn't use it as much because it's like, so in other words, uh, what takes minutes now to tune yeah. an entire song would take an engineer all day. No question. So you, you would no err question. on the side of let's not do it because yeah. it took so much time and yeah. you were on a budget. You, we didn't a have a full eight, song in a day or a week. Like was it one day for a full song to I tune? I mean god, I mean, remember they used Probably. to they used to use two tape machines and they would like slow one word down or they would use a a, a pitch shifter or a flange. They, could, yeah. they could use a, a pitch shifter on tape? Oh yeah. Yeah, I thought it was just like to cut the timing that you can. No, I'm talking about pitching. If you wanted to pitch something, if you had a great performance and a singer, like, man, I don't want to recut that because I did something special, but it's a little flat, they could take it and put it, they could go through a pitch shifter and notch it up five or six cents. On the tape? On the actual no, tape? No, through the pitch shift machine. So oh, they would have like an yeah. even tied yeah. pitch shift machine. Yeah. They would run it through the effect and then run it back through and re record it on another track. And that's track. a late trick. Oh yes, I mean, that's exactly right. Yeah. Now the thing is, though, is that then we go in to do records. I mean, there were uh, there was a band in particular when we were doing like our second record, and I was like, "This guy's the worst drummer I've ever heard in my life." And then I hear the record, and he's the best drummer I've ever heard in my life. And I'm like, "There's no way, period, that this guy played this stuff." And they're like, "Well, it's." Pro Tools, you know, we move it around and we make it up and we, you know, shine it all and put it on the grid and we're all set to go. And I'm like, I ain't rolling like that. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I can play to, I'll play to the click, you know, I'll do that for you, but I'm not doing all this stuff. And then they go in and they do the little nudge. You start to almost realize that, you know, I like imperfections. I do like that. But once the game moved into that world, it was like, you're going to play with everyone else or else you're going to sound like shit. You're going to sound old. While like every, yeah, it's like, don't be grandpa on this yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, don't be the guy that says, you know, uh, you know, I remember when, you know, black and white TV was just fine, you know, and it's like, don't. Don't do that, you know. Don't hate the internet, you know. I, like I hate the internet, but then I love the internet, yeah. and I, it all has its purpose, you know. Like the the thing that I do hate is that it's a bummer that nobody that's coming out now will ever know what it's really like to have to go in there and earn it at all times. Right. They had to earn it at all times. They had to sing it. That's the big. Totally. The singing was the big one. Even with the little nudges and the moves, you know, it gradually got to the point where. I mean, I do singing, and I do, I'm like, tune do that lot, shit. Huh? Yeah. I'm like, if I'm singing something, I, I walk in, I'm giving up. You know, I'm like, you know what? Voice is a little beat today. I'm down about this much. No sweat, man. Put it on Melodyne. Rip! There I am, and I'm like, yep. I'm out the fucking door, bro. <laughs> and and I, guess what? I could sing it all day and, and get there, or I can just let you fix kids. it right now, or go, I can go to the, the, play with the kids, yeah. you know? And the other thing is, to your point, is is the more you sing something over and over to get the right take, the darker your voice gets because you start losing the top end yeah. sharpness off yeah. your voice because your voice gets tired. It's a good excuse Yeah, and you gotta go home early. Yeah, that's it. That's right. Well, think can about it, it too. You can, you can only do, how many, how many push-ups can you do in a row before your muscles aren't as strong? And there can always be an argument made for is that like we, you and I both know Jan Smith, vocal coach? Yeah, yeah. Even though she's the greatest vocal coach arguably on the planet, she'll say, "Let's get it as good as we can get before we get diminishing returns from your voice, and then we'll use the tools available to make it right." Yeah. And I and I think there is something to be said for when we saw Star Wars in the movie theater, we were blown away. If a fourteen-year-old kid saw Star Wars today, they would laugh at it. Yeah. Because yeah. it looks cheesy, it, the, the practical effects don't look good. And I think we're just in a, in, a, in a time where people don't have, when they hear imperfect vocals, they hear imperfect drums, they're used to everything being yeah. so perfect and it's so it. fixed. So the question for people like the three of us is to use the wisdom that we have and the education that we have from these amazing records to say when, when is enough. Yeah. To say, Yes, those bands will fix everything. They will melodyne everything 100% yeah. vocally. They'll go ahead and they'll take all the drums and beat detect it, or, you know, and they'll make everything on the grid. Yeah. Whereas the three of us will say, um, we can use the tools that are available to us if we need to, but when is when enough? Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. When, when do we use technology the same way that Tom Cruise uses CGI in some of his movies, but he knows he wants to get in that plane and he wants and, to yeah. shoot the shot. I'm in yeah. the plane. We got to use some CGI because it, it's part of the tools that we use to yeah. make amazing movies. But the three of us got to get on the motorcycle and go 150 miles per hour too. Yeah. Yep. I mean, well, it Good turns point. out to where it's like the end of the whole deal is it's like, Here's the deal. You can buy all the records or you can download all the records. You know, I mean, again, you'd go up to a kid now, you go, yeah, I remember when we used to spend, you know, a hundred bucks to get 10 records, you know, and that was like a really good day to get 9.99 records. And they're like, hundred dollars. You know, that's like a year, so that's a year subscription to, to Apple Music. Yeah. You know, I don't have to mess with that. I get it all, I can get it all. But the, the live concert is what you have to offer. That's really, and, and now you can do some tricks in there and plenty of them and are it, doing it. And everybody but I does mean, that too. And, and they're doing that too. Yeah. Then there's some that are getting it to a point where it's like, this is what it is, you know? I mean, I remember when they were suing bands for playing tracks. I remember when Millie Vanilli got, you know, I mean, killed a guy, basically. He absolutely never got over the fact yeah, that they recovered. pulled their Grammy away, and now it's like, you're gonna pull it away because, you know, somebody else sang on the song? I mean, are you kidding me? Like, this is, you're going to concerts, people. Some of these concerts you're going to, there's nobody playing. Right? Yes. There's no one up there And they're there singing playing. to the track that's on the record. Oh, yeah. The singer that sang it yeah. is singing to his own voice, or her own voice. I'm not, it's again, crazy. I won't name names, but, uh, but I was going to fill in on a few little things over here, and I told somebody, man, that's a lot of, lot of material to learn really quick, man, you know? And I was told, well, don't worry about the kick drums, because we got those on track. And I was like... Change your number, or block I'm your like, number. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, dude. I'm out of this. And then I started listening to concerts, you know, you, I mean... You know, again, we could run this thing for 10 hours. It's like people don't listen to concerts. They and, and it's always been people hear concerts with their eyes. You know, I mean, basically, you if you know the songs, you don't really, you barely need to know what they're doing and you're watching the concert. Now this is there. And it's like, I've got to the point where I'm like, I'm gonna eyeball everybody, watch every hand movement, watch every kick pedal move, watch every hi-hat. I'm gonna watch everybody just for my own knowing of is anybody actually playing music right now? But I think, but I, th I think part of this, it, it, it always, you know, you always think where's the genesis? I have to shit. Do you remember? I have to shit. Yeah. Yeah, party. Like, no. Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> Turn off my mic. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when we used to I go mean, to, it has to stay it, on there, yeah, right? Yeah, it has to, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember when we used to go to hip hop shows in like the late 80s, <laughs> early 90s, and they were just, would rap along with the album? Oh yeah. Yeah, it was like, they'd play the album, yeah. but the vocals would be on there, but they would just rap along with yeah. the album. And I think, like, I don't think rock guys were the first guys doing that. No. I mean, it was coming from, the, the hip hop world. And the was, pop world. Yeah, know, I remember was, the first time we played with Prodigy in Europe. And I was like, oh, it's all on tape. Yeah. You know? But like I didn't mind it because it wasn't about that for them. Yeah. They were kind of electronic music yeah. for yeah. So Did they have the band too, the drummer and the Oh guitar? yeah, but it was still on tape. Yeah. I mean I saw Ministry at Lollapalooza. We probably were we there together. together. That's right. Yeah. And there was, was all, Jam yes, and that's exactly right. We were there. Oh, that was so awesome. And all of Ministry was on tape except some lead vocals. Yeah. But it was like but stylistically, it worked. You yeah. know, that was kind of what they were. Um, yeah, it, it's that hard industrial to, world definitely jumped in there. On and that, we and but, we jumped in on it too. Oh yeah, both, absolutely. Both Seven Dust and Stuck yeah. Mojo were very influenced by Nine Inch Nails and Ministry. Yeah, One hundred percent. And then and you know, so hey, listen. I, I wish that everyone was as talented as Journey and Rush, <laughs> but they just aren't. I and, mean, yeah, yeah, it's it's. Crazy. When I go see Foreigner, how did Rush not make one of these? How did moving pictures not get in? Anywhere? It was on my short list. Damn, yeah. man, there's too many good But how are you going to put moving then? picture over freaking I mean, John Sykes, man? I mean, listen, I love Shout at the Devil. That's a huge record for me, but there's no question that moving pictures should have stomped that shit. I just blew it. <laughs> uh -oh. I'd like to revamp this list. <laughs> We're no. going to reconvene. We're no. going to talk a minute no. while the guy's pooping. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I mean, Shout at the Devil had, it was huge for me. But damn, moving pictures was good. That would have been number four. Hey, I love you. I love you too, hey. buddy. Peace out. We roll. You don't. Head shitting. <laughs> <laughs>
that shit. <laughs> that was a perfect end. That yeah. perfect. Dude, thank you. Man. That was Absolutely. actually thank so strong. You, hey, I got a shit, brother. Oh, thank I you. I mean, it was real. It was real. I'm bad that was hey. before it was bubble guts. Yeah.